<laughs> it's not just sauerkraut. I mean, really, like, I mean, I've gotten to make just crazy variations. I mean, this summer I made all these um, um, fermented corn relishes where I'm like, you know, I cut the kernels off the corn, I mix it with onions and garlic and chili peppers, salt it, squeeze it, get some of that starchy juice out, ferment them for just a few days, and these beautiful corn relishes. I've, I've, been, I've been loving those. Um, I've gotten into making more sort of traditional Korean style kimchi where um, you know I soak the vegetables in a brine uh, and then I drain them and then I chop up all these veg uh, all these spices and then I mix the spices in a sort of a, a, a rice flour gruel um, and then add those to the vegetables um, and I've, I've, I've gotten really into sort of just learning some of the more uh, Korean uh, 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 techniques uh, for doing that. Um, I, I love I love like Japanese tikkun styles. Like actually, there's this one favorite thing right up called takwan, and it's like um, uh, daikon radishes fermented whole in rice bread um, for a long time, for like you know six months to a year. Um, and I, I love 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 those. You know, I you know you're fine. Thank you. Rice bran. Rice bran, bran being the, the outer layer that when rice is milled to make white rice, what's what's removed from it. And it's called what? Takwan. And then the, the, the more generic term Thank for you. Japanese style of, of, of mixed vegetable pickles in rice bran is called yuka. Um, so yeah, I mean I, I, I mean, I love learning different pickling uh, uh, techniques. I saw in the New York Times you got to go back to like almost these Yeah. Wow. Pistachio miso and pistachio Um, you know, I mean, well, first of all, it makes for more of a piece, like that, that sort of red piece. If you just do the vegetables, like you never get that sort of pastiness. And then I think it also, um, uh, like, like creating such a starchy uh, medium, kind of kickstarts the fermentation and makes things go faster. And, um, uh, you know, at least in contemporary uh, uh, um, Korean cuisine, it seems like um, uh, bubbly, uh, you know, actively bubbly is a characteristic that people really like in kimchi, and I think it just it makes it actively, you know, bu bubbly. Um, but that's just, it's purely speculative. Actually, the, the uh, international, um, uh, there was this international kimchi conference in Washington, D.C. last weekend. It's the first time it was ever held outside of Korea. Uh, and they held it in, in Washington, D.C. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't go to it, but uh, someone who went to it uh, gave me the program. So I didn't program. And another thing is the cucumbers and like, the cucumbers and the if you salt it in the root like this, a lot of the water is a little bit Do you discard the water? Do you think that? Or do you know what causes that problem? Um, I mean, I've definitely seen that. Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm not sure. I mean, I, I typically leave those out of ferments like this and do them more as whole vegetables. Um, uh, but I've actually seen cucumbers and, and mixed vegetable things. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting question. I, I don't know. Are there any vegetables you wouldn't put in? Ah, are there any vegetables I wouldn't put in? Um, not really. I mean, as a minor ingredient, there's not any vegetable I wouldn't put in. Uh, if I wanted to store it for a long time, I wouldn't put any of the vegetables she just mentioned in there. I wouldn't put cucumber, cucumbers or, or zucchini. I'm not sure that I, I mean, you know, uh, uh, peppers or fruits, I would put peppers in them. You know, just not those watery uh, uh, fruit vegetables. Kale. The thing, you know, I, I put kale in as a minor ingredient sometimes. When people do all kale ones, I do not like the flavor. Mm -mm. It's not that the fermentation doesn't work, it's that chlorophyll, dark, rich, dark green vegetables are so rich in chlorophyll, and that just has a strong, strong flavor. When it's just alone, it's too strong for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I like kale as maybe a 25% ingredient, <laughs> and I feel like it's a nice accent. Uh, so, so, you know, certain vegetables like that, um, 
you know, one of my favorite weird variations is mashed potatoes. I met this woman whose mother was from Italian Poland where they put mashed potatoes in their sauerkraut. And it's great. I mean, I steam the potatoes, I mash them up, I cool them to body temperature, and then I sort of layer in, you know, my cabbage vegetable mix and the potatoes, and it just gives it this crazy weird texture. And sometimes in Korea and in China, they'll, they put sticky rice in, little sort of masses of sticky rice. <coughs> Same kind of idea. Uh, I put fish in. I put, you know, cooked sausages. I put raw beef. Um, uh, you know, it's a very, very versatile project. A friend of mine put boiled eggs. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 a green papaya, excellent. A uh, grated sweet potato works really nicely. I mean, you can a variety of what you can put in. So I would say experiment. But you know, don't do huge experiments. Do, don't do huge, really huge batches of experiments at once. You know, experiment in small batches. Make sure you like it before you invest in the vegetables for for a huge batch.